Hi everyone, this is Jason, and I'm going to cover the administration side of UTRAC. I've recorded a video already about the user side, so I'm not going to touch on that. When you first log in, you're going to see a link in the upper right hand corner that says administration, assuming that you have um, permission to do so. When you click on that, this is where you'll be able to manage projects, users, groups, and roles. Now, what's key to understand in UTRAC is that both users and groups have roles, and roles have permissions. Both users and groups can independently be restricted to specific projects. So once you get that, then this kind of becomes a little bit more clear. So when you click on a project, and you can either add one or you can edit one that's already there, and I'll just kind of step through the individual tabs at the top. The first screen talks about the name of the project, which is what you see in the drop down in the upper left hand corner when you're just kind of using the system. The ID you generally want to keep short. This is how you're going to reference to specific issues. So for instance, this one will be called TP, so the first issue will be called TP1 and so forth. Uh, but you generally one to three characters is what you want for the ID. Um, you can also integrate this within your commits so that when somebody pushes up a commit that addresses this particular ID, it automatically gets flagged as resolved or the state can get changed based on that commit message. Um, and that can, also have a, that can also work with GitHub too. Uh, the project lead is the person who's going to be receiving all email notifications and or SMS, uh, not SMS, sorry, or instant message Jabber notifications. Um, a lot of people like Jabber so they don't get a bunch of email. Um, but it will support either one. But basically, anything that changes about a particular ticket that's an individual issue, uh, this person will be notified about what's happening. Uh, so when you go to the fields, these are the fields that are just the default ones that are automatically set up for a particular project. And this means every individual issue slash ticket will have these available fields. Priority, you know, severe, showstopper, critical, minor, etc. The type, um, whether what the state is, resolved, pending approval, you know, you can make these up. You can control these on a per project basis. Uh, and you can also add custom fields or remove the ones that are here. And you can edit all these. If you click on attach field here, that'll walk you through the process to create custom fields. So if you need something, you can edit, th edit it there. Uh, the assignees, uh, this is how you actually assign people to projects. And the reason why you want to assign people uh, to projects is because when you need to assign someone a particular issue or have someone be notified about what's going on, uh, you want to have their name as a choice. And uh, this also grants those people access to this particular project. So when you click Add Users to Group, you can select just a user. And again, a user can have a role, and a role has permissions. You can do the same thing with uh, groups, which I just clicked on, but you, users as well. Users and groups, you can click on one, select the individual person, which adds this person to the project, or you can add a group of people to this project. Now, when you are in groups, you'll see um, the, the stock ones that come with you track here, which you can create a new group. And this is just the name of the group. You can give it an icon if you want, or if you want newly registered people to automatically join this group, you can do that too. And then you have users. And your list of user accounts appears here. You can create a new user, and there you go. When you create a new user, uh, sorry, when you click on roles, now remember that both users and groups can have roles. And so as you edit these with whatever works best, you can create a role for project managers, a role for developers, designers, um, uh, or you can create individual roles on a per project basis. That's not usually done but you generally want to have them based on the type of activity that they do. Um, that's, that's generally how you want to do it. And then if you step inside of this role, like developer for example, you'll see a bunch of options and you can just tick these on or off and this is what gives anyone who's a member of that group these abilities. Um, and they're pretty self-explanatory. Uh, so anyway, when you click on users, and you want to assign a person to a group, you can click on the person's name. So this is me here. And you can click on Add to Groups, which will add this person to that group. So right now, I am a member of all users, which basically has no ability. A member of new users, which also has very limited ability. But you can add me to a group. Or you can just enable 
a role just for my user. So you don't actually have to assign a group, you can assign just a straight individual role. The other option that you can do once you do this is you can also specify individual projects for that person. And this is pretty commonly done. So what usually will happen is um, in a company setting, you will create a group for the individual developers, designers, and project managers, and then you'll just assign that group to projects because it doesn't really hurt anything for designers to have access to be able to log issues for whatever project is active. But if you had someone where you just wanted them to be able to see a specific project, you would click Assign Role, give them the role that gives them the permissions that you want them to have, and then click on a check mark next to the projects that you only want them to be able to see. Um, so that's how you assign users to groups, and the way you specify roles to um, for groups is when you go to groups, you can see that um, you'll have reporters here, and you can click on that, and then you can assign um, roles here at the tab to that particular group. So both users and groups have roles, and roles have the permissions. Uh, and then you can limit uh, project access not just on a user level, but on a role level. So you can see right here, I'm in the group called reporters, which has one role, uh, run role applied to it, which is reporter, and I can click on edit, and then limit that to a project two if I wanted to. So that's kind of how it's structured, which gives you pretty granular control over who sees what and who can do what. Um, so going back to where we were under projects, and then as we edit the existing one that's here, and then I will click on um, assignees again, and that is where you assign people. Moving forward, they have time tracking abilities and uh, agile boards. These are all new features that are relatively new to Utrack, um, but they have integration with um, so something that JetBrains make, makes called Team City, um, GitHub, and so you can explore those if you need them. Uh, but that's basically it. Um, in your individual profile, which everybody can access, when you click on your name, up at the top, sorry, and you click on profile, you'll see an option that says filters and notifications. And this basically says how you will be no notified and on what condition. Now, as you start doing activity on a project, the, the rows on here will start growing. And you can actually control on a per project level how your notifications are, are occurring too. Generally, um, anytime you make a comment on an issue or you take any action, you track will basically what's called star you to that issue. And you'll begin be getting notifications based on whatever you specify here um, to, to kind of keep you in the loop. Um, but that's it. And so, uh, and again, for the most part, you'll just assign groups to a project and be done. And so normally going through the whole process is you'll click on administration, you'll click on create new project, you'll give it a name like that. And then uh, once that's created, you'll click on it. And then you'll click on assignees up at the top and just assign a group. Assign group and it'll be developers. Or you might even have one for everyone. That's, I believe, is one option. Um, all users right there. And you're done. And uh, that's it.